next battle. Next battle. Years had passed since she left her father. She thought she could do fine. She trained hard alongside her friend, Dillian. She saw things no one else could. Patterns, shapes, movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Friendship turned to love. But the shadow of darkness never let her go. And she was caught up between two worlds. That of Zinbel and her past. And Dillian. Her future. Two realities tearing at her soul. She cannot accept his death. He was the only one that really it feel like to feel a love so strong. Overcome with grief. The gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are they? asks Hela. We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur, weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone, trees, metal, everything. Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let hell keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise. he took after his father, a chieftain who believed nothing he couldn't see, and he happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms, had to see the world through his eyes. Slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. <laughs> My own father was born blind. Doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. <laughs> the word dark to him means as little as the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. Should we fix them by taking away their sight? You give up the beautiful world thing. You, only you can see just to be rid of your nightmares. Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? The gift that makes you so special in my head. Just another part of the person I love. I left for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it made it worse. I'm so sorry.
Northmen say that their all-father, Odin, gave his eye in exchange for a drink from Mimir's well, the well of wisdom. In blindness there can be wisdom. Only by giving can you receive in return. For this reason, I give my life and pass on my stories of the Northmen to you, Senua. Can you hear me? I'm right here. Can't you see me? No. Help me. Breathe slow. It's the darkness. Stay still. Empty your thoughts. Tell me what you feel. The breeze. Good. Then there is a way out. I can't tell where it comes from. Yes, you can. The others. The voices. They've gone. I'm still here. Oh, so quiet. So dark. It's okay. Listen to your own breath. Feel it rise and fall. Good. Be aware of everything you hear and feel. Let your senses guide you. I can't go on. Will you? Find a way. I'm not leaving you here. I think I'm somewhere else now. That debris has gone. Use all of your senses. Let the world speak to you. What do you hear? I hear water. Go to me. It's reached the water. Good. That's your way out. Follow it upstream. I'm so sorry. I thought I left this all behind. Don't be sorry. It's not your fault. He was right. It's inside of me. It won't let me go. Senua. My father. He taught me the hardest battles of fought in the mind. Not the soul. You're no coward. Prove that to me in my trials. This is just another battle. You can beat him. This isn't your bet. You don't have to help him. I want to. Besides, you are going to be a great warrior one day. We need people like you. Okay. I'll do my best. I 
There is more of them. I think they're moving. You're breathing too fast. I'm scared. This is the sound of your breath. In and out. In and out. It will pass. You can do this, anyone. Anyway. I think I'm in a house. It stinks. Of death. The darkness is testing you. But you are in control. A well. There's a well. Don't turn back. You're getting close. even trapped within herself in the dark. You see me? Yes. Your eyes were open, but you were gone. And when it finally let her go, she could be anywhere with no memory of how she got there. When it comes for me, I have no power over it. But here, for the first time, someone was there to help. But I heard your voice. You brought me back. You found your own way back. All you needed was a little help. A little hope. With grammar reforged, you will have Odin's blessing to walk a goddess into the halls of Helheim and challenge Helheim as an equal. So Dillion was helping me. And the sword will lead me to him. Like when we first met. Dillion gave her the strength to pass the warrior trials. And she saw a way out to leave her past behind and become a warrior in Dillian's clan. The sword is tainted by the gods of darkness. Leave it. No. He left it here. He wants me to take it. You will pay a price for this. But years later, with Zinbel's parting words still haunting her, the darkness came back with a vengeance. A plague. Tell you. Everyone suffered. My father was not supposed to die like this. suffering you've caused. This is your fault. <laughs> you brought this plague to us. <laughs> you have blood on your hands. They're coming for you now. They're coming. They're coming to get you. Hold your heavy strike. Hold it. Hold your heavy strike. Hold it. Hold it. Unleash the sword. In the 
sea of corpses. The corpse waved through itself over the ones I loved. The ship broke up under them. The ship that had sailed from the land of shining fields. Their memorial stone is sacred. Come not here in the sun. Come not with a sword. Come not crying over a naked corpse. Come not with disturbed mind. Who is it? Galina! Where are you? Do you hear the signal? Do you hear the voice of your mother, Galina? She calls for you, Zenoa. Answer her. Answer her pitiful call. against the darkness when it came for her. She too had a sight. She too doubted the gods and let the darkness infest her. But she didn't run. She escaped the only way she knew how. She gave her life to the gods. If only you had done the same, the world would have been spared this horror. It's not too late. He's calling for you. Why don't you join him? Why do you still fight on? Do you two should suffer with your brethren in this lot and let your blood sink into the seas and the rivers of hell? Isn't that what you deserve after all you've done? Give the darkness what it wants, let it swallow your soul and destroy all that you are. Why are you fighting for someone who is already dead? Just look around you. What hope is there for you, even if his soul can be rescued? Do you think he will thank you for what you have done to him, to his friends, to his father? <laughs> I can't fight it anymore. Not on my own. Where are you, Mother? I want to be with you. <laughs> that night. She gave up on her world to follow in the footsteps of her mother, to go to a place where the darkness couldn't reach her. Senua, look at me. Do you hear that? Calling for me. We've lost so many. And I've lost my father. I can't lose you. You said it. I have blood on my hands. I didn't say that. You've done nothing wrong. Simba was right. Everyone will suffer. Zimbal is a fake. He is a hateful, bitter liar. He's poison. And his words still haunt you. Who do you trust? Him? Or me? Do you still believe in me, Senua? In us? Come back to me. Please. Don't let this darkness come between us. battles are fought in the mind. 
He gave her the sword with which to fight in more ways than one. And she gave him her word, never to surrender. All she needed was a little help. A little hope. I will tell you of a great hero named Sigurd, son of Sigmund, no less. Born after his father's death, Sigurd is cared for by the dwarf, Rain. But Rain does not love the boy. Instead, he plans to use him for his own ends. You see, Rain's father possessed a great treasure given to him by the gods. But Rain's brother, Fafner, killed his father and took the gold all for himself. Fafner hid the treasure out on a heath and could not leave it. And from the evil in his heart, he turned into a dark creature. A dragon. Something behind the door. What is it? She can feel it. No. Don't open it. Don't go in. Don't open it. What's it? Get back. A great beast guards Helheim. Garm is its name. And it knows you are here, Senua. It can smell your stink. What are you afraid of, Senua? How will you say Dillion if you are too much of a coward to step into the shadows? They can't stop me. Then do it. The beast is stalking you from the shadows. Your sword is useless here. to do. Your father wants them to go away, and he only hurts me to silence them. But he's gone now. But they always come back. He says I will die if I go with them. They say I'm already dead. No, and they won't be with them. Stop! That's why they crawl through the walls. Don't listen do you to them. see them? Do you see their faces? Help me! Help! Get me out of here! Don't go! Where has she gone? She's disappeared again. She shouldn't be here. She escaped the darkness. She, she took her own life to escape it. She can't remember when it started. When her mother lost her smile. Her eyes gazing past her towards a world she could not see. This is what happens if you reach for the underworld, he said. It was a lot to take in for a child. And the first time she felt the cold chill of fear. I don't talk much about her father, Zinbel. I suppose I just didn't want to risk upsetting her. But it doesn't matter now. Does it? The beast has been here. Everywhere. What if you collect them and there's nothing behind the door? Rain the Dwarf's sole desire is to possess this dragon's accursed treasure, and he uses Sigurd to reclaim it. He tells Sigurd the story of Fafner's gold, and the good hearted hero promises to slay the dragon if Rain would forge a strong sword for him. Sigurd remembers that his father once possessed a sword given to him by Odin. Odin broke the sword to bring about Sigmund's death, but Sigurd's mother still has the pieces. And so Rain reforges the famous sword. Sigurd uses the sword first to avenge his father, and then he and Rain go in search of Fafner. The dragon Fafner is so large and deadly 
that it would be impossible to kill him face to face. But each day, Fafner crawls across the heath to find water. So Sigurd digs a pit in the dragon's path and lies in wait in it. When Fafner slithers overhead, Sigurd sinks his sword into the dragon up to the hilt. Sigurd leaps from the pit, and Fafner sees his killer. He warns Sigurd that the treasure will lead to his death, as it led to the death of all who owned it. Sigurd replies that death comes to all men, and every man would want to be wealthy until that day. And he takes the treasure. We are not this place. It reminds her of the isolating, suffocating darkness that she lived through as a young girl. Imprisoned in her room at night, the faces in the dark coming through the walls. She once thought everyone could see them. I mean, that's what children say all the time, isn't it? That there are monsters in the dark. By the time she realized that only she could see them, her father, Zinbel, could see the monster in her. Do you feel it? The beast is crawling into your mind, searching for weakness. It found your mother. Did you see her die? I don't remember. I was only five. They told me she escaped the darkness. That she's with the gods. But what if they lied? What if the darkness took her and trapped her here? It's a trap. The beast is coming. Keeping me away from the others. Away from Tilly. I won't give up. I'm not going to rot in here. I'm going to find Tilly. Although Sigurd kills the dragon, Rian wants to keep Fafner's gold all for himself. Rian also wants the strength and wisdom of the dragon, so he drinks its blood and asks Sigurd to roast Fafner's heart for him. Sigurd does so, but when he touches the roasted heart to see if it is done, he burns his finger. Without thinking, he licks his finger and tastes the dragon's blood. In that moment, he understands the language of birds and hears them talk nearby. Sigurd's newfound power lets him hear the birds speak, 
And they say, Sigurd should eat the heart itself. Rian wants Fafner's gold. Sigurd should kill Rian before Rian kills him. Sigurd should find Brynhild, the Valkyrie, who sleeps in a chanted sleep. Sigurd heeds the bird's advice. He kills Rian, eats Fafner's roasted heart and takes Fafner's treasure, and he embarks on a new quest, to ride to Hinderfell and find Brynhild the Valkyrie.